how to revive your DJI batteries using this little CP2112 debugging board. This is part two of a two part uh, video and we will be discussing the techniques and the how to's of using this little board to revive your DJI batteries. Let's get into it. Right, take 462. <laughs> My camera battery just died and it showed it was full. Anyway, but while we're talking about batteries, guys, welcome back to the channel. Sorry we've been so quiet. Uh, normally we try and get out a video a week, but um, things have been kind of up and down and you know how life goes, things just get busy. So today we are talking about the CP2112 debugging board. Now this board is used to revive your drone batteries that have gone into hibernation. Guys, if your batteries are swollen, please don't even attempt it. Don't even put them in your drone. You're going to cause yourself lots of tears when it falls out the sky because the cells just swell with heat and it pops the battery out of the drone. So if your batteries are swollen, please don't even attempt to revive a battery that's not charging that is swollen. Okay. If your batteries are not swollen and they've just gone into hibernation because you haven't used them, because you haven't maintained them properly, well then this little guy can work for you. So this is uh, video two of two. If you guys haven't seen uh, the first video yet, I'll put it up here and I'll put it in the description below. So go and check that out. Um, we've had a huge response to it. Some guys saying it's the most detailed, most explanation, uh, most, exp how do I say this? Bloody hell. Um, the most explained video in detail. <laughs> Jeez, like, it's not freaking Monday brain, but it's Thursday. Anyway, um, it's explained very well in detail in video one. But there are some things we didn't cover, and this is where part two comes in. So this is what we're doing right now. So the first thing I want to cover, and one of the biggest questions we get asked is, can this little board work on my Phantom 4 and Mavic Pro batteries? And the answer is, unfortunately, no, guys, it doesn't work, it's not supported. So there is another video we did where we used the EV2300 and some software. Um, so I will link that as well up here now and then in the description below so you guys can go and check that video out. That is for, we generally use this for your Phantom 4 and Mavic Pro batteries. So it's the EV2300 with uh, TRB software. But the bad news at the moment guys is TR TRB software is no longer available. So you cannot buy it. We were fortunate we bought a year long license. So I think we are current until about March 2024. That's the bad news. The good news is they are launching a brand new project. Okay. So we're going to see if there's any additional features, any additional battery supported within that firmware. But at the moment, with the EV2300, you cannot use TRB software. Okay. You cannot purchase the software anymore. Anyway, bad news uh, for Mavic Pro and Phantom 4 guys but let's focus back on the CP2112 board. Guys, the boards are very inexpensive, uh, maybe about 50 Rand, $4, somewhere around there. Sure, getting it uh, to South Africa, you're gonna wait, up, wait about two months to actually get them here. More news on that later on in the video, so keep watching. Uh, for our South African viewers, we have some good news for you. Right, so the CP2112 board supports Mavic Air, Mini 1, Mini 2, DJI Spark, uh, Mavic 2 batteries and Mavic Air 1 batteries and Mavic Air 2 batteries. Guys, that is it. And also your Osmo series. Um, now, Osmo series, guys, we've only had experience with the Osmo... Um, um, oh, gosh. Another blank with the... Um, that I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get it now. I'm gonna get it now. Um, the, the little square batteries, the Osmo Plus batteries. Yes, there we go. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with me today. And I'm not gonna cut all of that out. I'll just we'll just leave it all in there. Um, so that is kind of the support for the CP2112 batteries. Now, in our first video, we said an easy way to revive your DJI batteries. And some guys are like, oh, I'm waiting for the easy part. When when's the easy part coming? Now, let me be brutally honest with you, and that's why we're having a part two here. 
the batch we did on video one was easy and you might we might get out of 10 batteries we might get one of those where it's literally it's that easy it takes us a minute and the battery is revived and it's charging on the original DJI charger now that is not always the case okay unfortunately so let me walk you through the steps and as we go through the video we'll give you the whole process again on how to use this board but let's debunk some issues guys are having and they're not sure how to fix them and that's what part two is all about so guys some guys were asking about the adapter boards okay these are these are drone specific this is the mavic air this is the uh, mini and spark and this is the air 2 now guys these are not needed if you're just trying to revive your batteries at home let's say for argument's sake you have a mini 2 you do not need this board okay for us it's a nice to have because of the amount of batteries we actually do so it's not a must have it's a nice to have but you do not need it and let me show you why or how how easy um, it is okay so this is just for an example hopefully you guys can see this there's four wires in here forget the fourth wire okay so it's just three pieces of wire with little black legs you're gonna take your cp board you're gonna plug it in your ground your clock your data okay simple as that it just plugs into the board very very simple now you'll see on the top here you've got three open ended wires okay within the dji battery killer software if you go bottom right hand corner and you click help and you select your battery for this example we're going to say mavic 2 battery and you click help it shows you the actual pinouts okay within the charging uh, charging rail it shows you the pinouts so it shows you where ground is it shows you where clock is it shows you where date is positive and negative okay all you're going to do is you're going to follow that diagram and you're going to pin your ground into ground, your clock into clock, your data into data. Okay, it's that easy. Just three loose end, open end wires. Okay, plug it into your battery, pin it in, plug this into your laptop, then open up the firmware and click connect. Now, what a couple of guys are experiencing is when they're clicking connect, they're getting an S bus error. So big capital, S B U S error cannot read okay so there's two things you can do when that happens number one is swap out your clock and your data please be very careful that you don't swap out your ground leave your ground on the ground it says gr g and d on the board that is your ground swap out your clock and your data close your software and reopen it and try it again okay if that does not work second thing you can do is just hit the power bat uh, power button on your battery okay just hit it like that and then click connect and see so a lot of times i found that when when we're doing this and we don't always hit the, the power button then it won't read the battery so power button it pushes through a bit of voltage the battery wakes up and the board then can read it so those are the two easy ways the third way if you've done steps one two and three and none of it's working the only other thing you can do and this is where the easy falls away maybe for you guys we've been doing this for for some time now so the only thing you guys can do is literally yes we have opened this one before yes this is staged um, <laughs> uh, let me just try and get it open properly all right you have to open up your battery you do not have a choice okay so what happened this is a mavic 2 pro battery it's got four cells two of the cells might be at zero voltage for an example now and two of the other cells might be at 2.7 volts each okay this battery's nominal charge is 17.4 volts or so 17.6 volts okay so what you need to do is then you need to open up the battery make sure you have a multimeter disclaimer these are lipo batteries they are if you pierce a cell you will burn your house down so please be super super careful how you open the batteries what you use please don't use uh, um, steel steel tools and that sort of stuff um, there are a couple of clips sometimes a bit of glue pop the battery open 
be very careful. Um, I would suggest if you aren't experienced, please do this outside um, just for your own safety. Guys, these are lipos. Please, if, if you don't know what I'm talking about, YouTube, lipo batteries uh, catching a light and you'll just see how bad it is. Um, these things are incredibly dangerous. Anyway, disclaimer, you have been warned. Once you've got your battery open, okay, you're gonna have to take everything out. So you have to take the back, co back cover off specifically. And this one, there's a lot of adhesive on the back and you'll pop the battery out. Then you're going to need one of these. Maybe you don't have one, maybe a friend's got one, maybe you know of somebody who has one, but this is what we call a bench power supply. Okay, so for example, here we've got a Mavic Pro battery. Okay, forget guys, remember the CP does not work on Mavic Pro batteries. This is just an example of the bench power supply. Okay, you'll connect your positive, you connect your negative. With this bench power supply, we can actually see uh, voltage um, and regulate voltage and amperage. So again, check on the battery, back of your battery, what its nominal voltage is and get it up to about there very slowly. So we generally trickle voltage in, we'll take the battery off, we'll give it about 10 or 15 minutes, and then we'll measure each and every single cell to see where that voltage is and where it should be. In previous cases, we've had a, a pack of cells that are beautiful. Every single one is charged up to where it needs to be and it holds its voltage. Other cells, We've charged up to where it needs to be, we take the charge off and we give it 30 seconds and one of the cells drops right back down to zero again. Okay, that is a completely shot cell, it's damaged, there's nothing you can do with it. But in your case, let's hope all of your cells are good. Bench power supply, trickle voltage into it until it gets to its nominal charge voltage. Okay, whatever that might be, again all the information is on the back of the battery. So push that voltage slowly. Do not crank it up and try and get a quick charge in. You know, give it, even if it's half an hour, 45 minutes, just trickle that voltage in, okay? When the battery's full and it's hit its nominal voltage, take it off, multimeter each and every single cell, okay? Make sure that the cells are relatively even and there's at least 2.5 volts in each cell. If that is your case, you can take it off your bench power supply Plug in your CP again and get going. If all your cells are at voltage, you will be able to read the battery. If there is one cell that is not good anymore, then you know what guys, bin it, bin it. Um, as, as simple as that. So that is one of the main errors guys are getting. Yes, it can be a quick fix depending on the state of your battery or batteries. Um, in a case, like I said, 80% of the time, this is the route that we have to take. We do Spark batteries, Mavic Air, Mavic, uh, Mavic Pro, different, different kettle of fish for them, but it can be quite quick for us. But because we've got this, this guy over here, it really helps us a lot. Um, just to trickle that voltage in, get every single cell to where it needs to be, and then read with your CP2112. So that is a part two on how to revive your drone batteries with the CP2112. Now, if you guys do want the software, um, if you are watching from outside of South Africa, I know we have a stack of international watches. Thank you guys. Thank you, we really appreciate you guys watching and supporting and commenting. Uh, it really helps the, helps the channel a lot. Don't forget to subscribe. Please guys, hit the subscribe button. It really, really helps the channel. Um, there'll be some other cool videos coming out as we as we trickle along, as we go. But if you guys do wanna get hold of the firmware, in the description below will be a link. Guys, we're asking for a small donation of $1, $10, $5. We've had a couple of guys give us $5, $3, $10. It really helps the channel. It helps us invest in new equipment, new things, more stuff we can share with you guys. Um, so if you want the firmware, even if you drop a, a $1 donation, we would hugely and greatly appreciate that. Once you've done a donation, pop us an email, orders at webuydrones.ca.za, and we'll happily send you the password. You can download the software and get going with your CP2112. If you have also donated, we will also then support you um, going forward. As much help as you need will obviously correspond via email, 
Um, you're welcome to WhatsApp us as well on plus two seven seven two zero double one eight four double five. Those are for the guys internationally watching the channel. Uh, we'll happily support you um, if you've made a donation in terms of troubleshooting and that sort of stuff. If you're based in South Africa, right, we have brilliant news for you guys in South Africa and you have got dead batteries at home and you would like to attempt reviving them. We have got stock of these little guys arriving in the next few days. Okay, if you are interested in, in purchasing one, we're actually gonna bundle, uh, we're actually gonna bundle them. So you'll get a CP2112, you'll get the wiring required with it, and you'll get a flash drive with the software, okay? Um, I'll put all the information down in the description below. Get hold of us, order yours, and we ship countrywide anywhere in South Africa. Um, and then you, could, you will be able to obviously um, try and revive your batteries yourself at home. Again, if you do buy CP2112 uh, with the software and the cabling, will obviously offer you any sort of support you need. So great for South African clients. We have got a little more than a handful coming in. So if you are keen, get in touch, uh, let us know, and then we can get you one of these. But anyway, let's go back to part one of video one, and let's show you the process of how we use these little boards. Guys, if you have any questions, please drop a comment down below. If you have any suggestions, uh, let us know if this more information needed in terms of batteries and so on drop us a comment we're always happy to help we have been a little bit slow on the comments we'll definitely try and improve that so do apologize there but let's try and help you guys where we can um, please don't forget to subscribe be cool be lacquer subscribe just hit the button it takes you less than a second and um, please shout if we can help you guys with uh, with any sort of battery support any sort of dji support across the board. Um, obviously we do a stack of repairs, not just battery repairs, but drone repairs. Um, and we've, we've got good stock of parts and that sort of stuff. So any support you guys can give us would be greatly appreciated. But let's get into the process of how to use this board with the firmware, which is what we showcased in video one. Thank you guys, take it easy, have a brilliant day, and we'll check you guys on the next one. Catch you later. Right, what's required? Of course, your little CP2112 debugging board. And then we've got four adapters for the four various batteries, actually five various batteries. So here we've got uh, Mavic 2. Uh, over here we've got DJI Mini 1, Mini 2, and Spark. Uh, this side over here we've got Mavic Air 2. And over here we've got Mavic Air 1. So we like a, a quick, simple plug and play solution. So we've got all the boards, um, but they are not necessary. If you don't want to use the boards, grab yourself some wiring like this and you'll be able to pin straight into the batteries. Alright guys, we've got the DJI battery repair tool open. Um, I haven't got a battery connected. So if you're not going to be making use of the adapter plates for the specific batteries, then there is a way to pin into the batteries. And if you go down to the bottom here, and you click help there we go okay mavic 2 pro zoom it shows you the positives the sda the sel and the ground points so you can literally pin into the battery in these points mavic air same thing mavic air 2 mini 2 mini 1 mini 1 and spark actually mini 2 mini 1 and spark i believe use exactly the same so you can do spark batteries with this as well so there are the pinouts so you can literally pin um, little wire connectors in there connected to your your cp2112 connect to the software and read uh, we're going to do a mavic 2 battery um, so we'll show you exactly how we do that we obviously using the adapter plates it does speed things up a little bit um, and it does help because those pinouts are, are already there and in place anyway let's get into showing you guys how we do things with the mavic 2 battery right we are set up and ready to plug into the pc as you'll see here, we've got our leads going from our CP uh, debug board to our Mavic 2 adapter board. Uh, we've obviously got this four pin plug here. It's not required. You can just pin uh, wires directly from the CP straight either into the battery or if you do get yourself a board onto the board and then obviously our USB cable into the PC. So we are now ready to plug into the PC and get this battery 
on the go again. So let's head over and go and do that. Right, so we have our Mavic 2 battery connected up to our CP2112. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hit connect. All right, device successfully opened, device successfully configured. I'm gonna go hit read info. Okay, uh, could not perform SMB. Let's just try read it again, there we go. Okay, so we read, gave us an error right here. Could not perform SMB. Sometimes if that does happen, what you can do is just hit the power button on the battery. All right, and this is gonna give you all the details on the battery. Okay, the uh, cell counts, your charge cycles, current temperature. Um, so there's quite a bit of information to read through here. Uh, but you just kind of go through it. There's a battery serial number as well. Uh, so what we want to do now, I see we've got 47 cycles. Okay, so we need to unseal the battery. Unseal successful. Let's go clear PF. Clear PF successfully. Clear PF2. Clear PF2 successful. Right, so we've just removed the PF. That's fantastic. So what we'll do now is as soon as we exit, it will then reseal the battery. So we're going to hit exit, reseal the battery, and let's go see if this thing charges. And there it is. The battery's charging. This took me probably all of two minutes to do. Um, it really does help having those adapter plates because then you, you don't have to pin out directly into the battery. But nonetheless, it may be take you a little bit longer if you have to pin out. But that's really how easy this is. That was legitness. Yeah, it was. Huh?